Okay, so as promised, I'm going to go through the actual process of making this into a font. Some of you probably aren't quite there yet, but for those of you that are close, I want to walk through it. Some of you have been waiting for a while, so I appreciate your patience. Um, so I, it turns out that the paint font people decided to change their template to move the last uh, row of letters onto the next page. So if you try to upload right now, it breaks. Um, this stuff happens occasionally when you use some kind of an online um, so anyway, we can fix that. It's just a matter of switching around layers a little bit. Um, we have two options. If you go to the paint font website, you can download a fresh set of the templates. Uh, if you just go to create and download templates, choose PNG, and then you can click create templates. Okay, And it'll download into a zip folder on your flash drive. The other, or on, on the um, downloads folder. The other option, if you go to today's exercise, oops, helps if I go to the right class. If we go to today's exercise 116. At the bottom here, I have updated template number one and updated template number two. They're both images that you can download. So if you right click and say save link as, you can drop it onto your flash drive. Uh, I already have them downloaded into my downloads folder. OK, so now I'm going to go back to my Illustrator file that I worked hard on. And I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to open up the Layers window so that we're seeing this little panel here. And I'm going to click on New Layer, which is right next to the trash. And when I do that, I'll get Layer 7 here, or some layer. It's probably Layer 7 for you. And while I'm on that layer, I'm going to go ahead and go to File, and then Place. And I'm going to drop the newest template in. So let me go to my user here, go to my downloads. And here's the first template. I'll go ahead and place. And it shows up there. And then I'll go ahead and place the second one on another new layer. So let me create a new layer, layer 8. And I'll go to File, and then Place. And I'll put the second one there as well. So what has happened, and it's very difficult to see uh, because they took away the little characters that tell us where the letters are. Uh, but essentially, on page 7, we have the first page minus the last row of letters. So let me go ahead and move that layer down so it's below my font for page 1. So there it would be. right? All of the letters still line up except for this last row of letters. So let me go ahead and I'm going to lock layer 7 so I can't select it. And I'm going to select this last row of letters, the A, B, C, D, and E. And I'm going to move those up onto the font page 2 layer. So I'm going to do that, once they're selected, by dragging this little box up in the layer stack to font page 2, or whatever layer you ended up drawing the lowercase letters on. So now I have the correct layout for the first page. And so now it's just a matter of creating the second page. So let me turn back on my layer 8, which is the second page. Let me turn on my font for that page. And I'm going to drop the layer below so that we can see it. Okay, So we're close on this, other than we have to move the letters down, right? because they don't line up with the last row. So I'm going to go ahead once again and lock the background image so that I don't accidentally move it. And we'll zoom in a bit. I'm going to take these two layers. Oh, wait. Hold on. Turn off the stuff below. And I'm just going to drag and move it down so that they end up down on the lower set there. Then I'm going to take this set and move it down and over so that it ends up right there. The H and I, I'll click and drag them to be right here. The F and G will move to right there. And then I'll come down here. I've got the C, D, and E. We'll move those guys up. And then I need the A, B. And those are going to go up. Again, I apologize for making you have to go through this. Um, I didn't catch that they had changed the template. And look the same on the surface. So it did add one character, which was just a straight line. 
So I'm just going to come over and add that little straight underscore for reference. I'll put it there. Okay. So now I have this page done, and I have the other page done. So I really didn't have to draw anything. I just had to move them around so that they lined up correctly. Okay. So I have that ready. So let's go ahead. Since I'm showing this page, I'm going to go ahead and do the export for this page. I'm going to choose to go to File and Export instead of Save for Web. I've been finding that it works a little bit better to do export. So I'm going to go to File and then Export. And I'm going to change the type to PNG, because that appears to, to work a little bit better as well. Uh, and we'll go ahead and call this 04A. And just in case, I'm going to check the box for Use the Artboards, which makes sure that it crops anything that's outside of my page off. right? So I'm going to make sure that that's checked. And then I'll go ahead and click on Save. And I want to make sure that the resolution is set to high. And I'm going to change the background color to be white. I don't need it to be transparent in this case. Okay? So I'll go ahead and say OK. And that was my first page. And then let me turn off those two. And we're going to turn back on the first set, which is right there. Again, no lower letters. And I'll go ahead and go to File. Export selected again, or excuse me, export. And we'll call this 02. And once again, I'm going to check the use artboards. And then I'll click on Save. There we go. 300, white background. I'll go ahead and say OK. All right, so now I have those two images saved. I'm going to go back to my web browser, and I'm going to open up the Paint Font website. And this time, I'm going to click on Upload Your Completed Templates. And it gives me the ability to um, choose a file. So I'll click on Choose File. And I need to go to my flash drive to today. And I'll pick the first one. I don't believe it matters what order you pick them in. So I'll pick the first one. I'm going to add another upload file because there were two of them. And I'll pick the second one. Okay. Then I'll give this font a name, for lack of something better. Uh, and I said TTF, but if you pick TFF, that's fine. Uh, or an OTF, it's really th that's fine too. Any of them will work. Okay. So I'll go ahead and click on Start Upload. And it will process for a bit. And I should get something that looks like this, with no black boxes or rectangles or anything. Right? This, this will mean that it's a clean uh, export. Once I'm done, there's a button for download the font. So I'll go ahead and download that, right, which is now stored in my downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead and copy it and move it over to my flash drive. All right. So now I also asked you to verify that it worked. So over here on our exercise 116 handout, I have a sample InDesign font or an InDesign template. So I'll go ahead and right click on it and say save link as. Uh, this is going to download as an InDesign file. Go ahead and put it in my folder for today. You could of course create your own, but I'm trying to save you the work of having to do that. It's already pre-created for you. And so let me go ahead and I have to load this font into my, um, onto my computer. So remember how we did that last time where I had to load that other little application, uh, which was the AMP font viewer? I still should have that installed. My guess is that you still have it installed as well. Uh, so I'm going to go to my flash drive. And we'll go to, I think I put it in resources, font viewer. Right? This should look familiar. And I'm going to go to Not Installed Fonts, go to my flash drive, and go to today's. And there it is. And I'll go ahead and say Install Selected Font Temporarily. Yes, there it is. And now I can open up that InDesign file. So I'll go to the Start menu. I'll go to. Um, all programs, 
design standard CS6, InDesign. Perfect. Let's go ahead and open. Maybe. And we'll navigate to my flash drive and open that sample font, font INDD. It says that the font isn't there. That's OK. Right. I'm going to now select everything. And I'm going to change the font to be my font. And it worked. So now I can see my font there. I'll go ahead and go to File, Export. I'm going to export a JPEG. We'll call this sample font. And we'll go ahead and click on Save. Maximum 300 export. Perfect. And now it's a matter of posting it. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the website. I'm going to add a new post. And we'll call this And I need to make sure that I do a couple things. The first thing is I'm going to come down here and add a featured image. That featured image is going to be that JPEG that I just created, which is right there. So I'll set the featured image. I'll make sure that it's categorized under today's exercise. 116. And then I'm going to add a little, go ahead and add media, upload files, and then I'm going to upload the font itself, which is right here. There it is. And we'll go ahead and insert it into post. And I'll have a little link to it in just a second. There it is. And then I'll go ahead and click on publish. And that's it. Okay. So it took a little bit of reorganization. Uh, and then this InDesign part is just to verify that it, in fact, works and you could use it as a font. Um, this, by the way, is another, um, instead of creating the font in Illustrator, you could write out a handwritten font if you wanted to use like an architectural font um, and then have it create a font of your own handwriting, which might be a nice thing to have. Um, I have one that I have of my own handwriting that I can use. Um, in some, some cases where I want to have something that's a little bit more casual. Anyway, so uh, this is what we're looking for as an end result. Are there any questions? No? Nope. All right. Sounds good. So if, if you're looking for the AMP font viewer, if you go to our site and you go to Tutorials, Digital Life, 0. One five. It'll have a link. It'll have a direct link to the download page uh, where you'll be able to download it. It's right here. It's this download link. There's always lots of download links on these pages. It's this one. Uh, and then you'll pick one of the mirrors and it'll start downloading. If you have trouble, I'll, I'll have to do it.